My name is Jeff Johnson. I'm a professor of geosciences at Boise State University. I want to show why Santiguito Volcano in Guatemala is such an awesome place to collect volcano geophysical data. Santiguito is located in the western part of Guatemala's volcanic arc. We have to make our way to the city of Quetzaltenango and then onto the trailhead at Llanos de Pinal. From there the hike into the active dome takes a full day and there's no real trail. To the summit the trail is pretty decent but it climbs nearly 4,000 vertical feet. On the first day we get off to a relatively early start. It's a long ways to get into the dome and we want to make sure we avoid afternoon rain. Descending the Canaletta, a mud flow scoured ravine is especially difficult. When it's wet, the ash is very slippery. At the base of the Canaletta, the vegetation opens into the expanse of lahar deposits with great views of the now dormant Brujo Dome. This is where porters leave our supplies and return to Llanos de Pinal. Our camp is still several hours away. We traverse clockwise around Santiguito's dome, climbing a gully with numerous steep rock steps. At the top, the terrain levels out again. Here the weather is overcast in the afternoon, and we hear many more rock fall than we see. We feel an aftershock from the recent oh, Guatemala magnitude 7.4 earthquake. Wow. It shakes us a little bit yeah. and it knocks down an inordinate amount of rocks from both Santiguito and Santa Maria walls. The earthquake is eerie, but it really has nothing to do with the nearby volcano. As we set up camp, we start to get a glimpse of the Caliente Dome. We get a nice little explosion just as we're setting up our tents. In the morning, the weather is great. There are a few very nice explosions occurring at a rate of about once per hour. A few people in our group have never been here before, and they can't resist taking out their cameras every time the volcano burps just a little bit. Can't say I blame them. Our goal today is to take samples from the Mitad Dome, which is a steep climb up ash-coated blocks. The ash drapes lava spines and cliffs and helps to fix the rocks in place. Without this ash cover, rockfall would be a real hazard here. The top part of the Mitad Dome is otherworldly. It's gray and barren, even though lush green vegetation covers the hill slopes just a little ways away. We can't resist to scramble up one of the nicest spines on the summit of the Mitad Dome. So here we are at the top of the Pared de Guatemala. This is uh, the highest point or near to the highest point on Mitad Dome. This is the dome that is closest to Caliente vent and it is not active currently. Looking in this direction in the clouds you can see Monje and Brujo domes which were active in the 70s and Caliente vent hidden in the clouds just now is over here. Panning further over you see another spine again we're on Mitad Dome and then moving up to Santa Maria uh, you can see the summit which is about 1200 meters above us. Uh, currently up there Ben Andrews is taking photographic measurements, uh, observations of the Caliente Dome. Okay, hey Ben, Ben Kennedy, can you tell us what you're doing here on Santiaguito? Yeah, I'm here with a student from the University of Canterbury. Um, we're up trying to map the, the, the dome and the way the spines here that we're standing on have um, extruded out of, the, out of the, the old dome. We're going to be sampling rocks looking at how um, shear zones develop. Down below is our team including Armando Pineda, our guide, several students who we'll meet later. Hey there, Jake and Danny, uh, students from North Carolina, New Mexico Tech. Hey. Come find uh, 
Take a look around you and see if you can find a bread crust bomb and bring it this way. Let's see who has the better bread crust bomb out of the two of you. Well, I definitely have the best one. Do you? I knock you off the slope. <laughs> okay, Jake. Show it to the camera. Excellent. So, my name is Jan Lavalier from the University of Liverpool, and we are experimental volcanologists. Uh, in, in these rocks, in this rocks, it's, it's a bit of the same surface as we had up there with the spine. So, it could be like a, an earlier surface here with frictional contact between the magma and what might have been here sometime in the past, the outside of the conduit, so the rocks. Hello, Armando. Hello, Tell me what your name is and what are you doing? Estamos aquí en la base de la Puebla de Guatemala y no se puede apreciar nada de lo que es caliente. Para que el clima me... Here on the summit of Mitad, we see no obviously fresh ballistics or lava bombs, but it's still an uncomfortable place to be when it starts to cloud over. We head down to continue our observations and measurements near the campsite in the early afternoon. What are you doing? Cleaning. <laughs> are you actually collecting ash? Yes, and quite a lot. This overnight, yeah. Okay. And some more, probably, during the day. So what do you expect to do with this ash? Can you tell me in 30 seconds what the uh, goal is? The goal is to try to understand what the hell is happening in the conduit, so that if there is any juvenile, real juvenile material that is actually being ejected, Looks like it already collected some ash, huh? Yes. Cool. Okay, let's go back to the um, central node there and see if it's working. Hold on okay. a second. That was fortuitous, wasn't it? That <laughs> yeah. was perfect. It's a little too bad that we weren't in the foreground while uh, uh, recording was going on. That would have make, made an impressive uh, background. But I think that will still be kind of cool. Sensor, volcano, eruption, on cue. You want to just open it up and see if it's all good inside? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, still recording. All right. That means we got that eruption. <laughs> Data processed from this excursion will be similar to previous years. Back in the comfort of our office, we'll be able to use the infrasound or low frequency acoustic data to quantify explosions and track block and ash flows. We'll also use the seismic data to better understand the earthquakes accompanying explosions. Together with other tools, we will be able to better understand how explosive volcanism occurs at silicic volcanic centers. After a rest night in Quetzaltenango, we head back to Llanos de Pinal and then up a decent trail to the summit. Our campsite is on the other side of the summit near the edge of the immense mile-high scarp which was dissected during the paroxysmal eruption of 1902, which erupted about 10 times the dense rock equivalent of Mount St. Helens in 1980. From here we can see the active dome 1,200 meters below. At least we can see it when it's clear. Although it gets cold and windy at night, some of our best observations are made after the afternoon clouds clear and the sun goes down. At this point, we get to see the active dome through telephoto lenses with great deal of detail. In the morning, we thank our tourist police escort. We're reluctant to depart for Quetzaltenango, hoping for at least one more large explosion before leaving. We procrastinate by playing with machetes and asking Ben Andrews for an interview of our project goals.
I'm Ben Andrews. I'm a volcanologist with the Smithsonian Institution National Museum of Natural History. And I'm here today at Santi Santa Maria Volcano observing the Santiguito Dome with um, synchronized cameras. And we use these synchronized cameras to make a 3D reconstruction of the dome surface through time. We have uh, five cameras that are deployed and they're shooting right now every 12 seconds. And so we get a DEM of the surface of the dome every 12 seconds, and we can also track features on that. These are two cameras are part of our camera network, and we actually have three more cameras across the mountain. And these cameras are synchronized, so they're taking pictures of the same same dome at the same instant in time, but with different angles, and that allows us to make a 3D reconstruction at each instant in time. And here's what an explosion looks like in detail through the eyes of a 200 millimeter telephoto lens. Field work is only part of the fun for volcanologists. Back in the office we get to play with our integrated seismoacoustic deformation optical data set. In a previous year we discovered dramatic uplift of the entire surface of the lava dome concurrent with explosion onsets. Imagine six football fields in area uplifting by one meter within about one second. We used a technique called particle image velocimetry to quantify this uplift as seen in these animations. It remains to be seen what we'll be able to accomplish with this year's data. 